The next meeting helps you prepare for energy disruptions by developing energy backup systems and contingency plans. After reviewing the program material with your team, you'll choose from a list of 12 actions, as many or as few as you like. These include stocking three days worth of food and water, creating backups for phone service, cooking, heating, and light, even learning to help your kids adjust. In the meetings, we discussed um, the actions we have to take in case of a power failure. We practiced the night without electricity. We ate cold food and we ate with, by candlelight. At the third meeting, you'll review the energy disruption actions you took, then jump into the next subject, preparing for emergencies, natural disasters, and terrorism. Team members create emergency evacuation and communication plans for their families, figuring out routes, emergency numbers, and places to meet if family members are separated. You'll even practice evacuation procedures. We understand that uh, quite a number of kids were lost um, during the Katrina hurricane, and it took a very long time to reunite them with their families. And that's something that we want to avoid if we can possibly avoid it. Definitely one of the high points of doing the All Together Now program for me was creating an evacuation plan so that we didn't get separated because after watching Katrina on the news and seeing children separated from their parents, that was devastating. Other actions in this section include preparing for first aid and medical needs, preparing for fire or extreme heat, and ways to help people with special needs and even your pets. There's also a section on sheltering in place. This is especially important in situations that may involve contaminated outside air. All these are actions that will help you, your family, and your neighbors respond safely and efficiently in crisis situations. All together now, the great thing too, it was creative and it was fun. My kids got really involved. Uh, they feel more proactive. They feel like they have, um, you know, some tools. At the fourth meeting, the last in the All Together Now program, you'll review the actions for creating resilient buildings and blocks. Remember 9-11, how we all pulled together for support in a crisis? This part of the program builds that kind of connection and helps make our buildings and blocks stronger and better places to live. You can sustain the momentum by continuing to meet and take actions like volunteering to help your more vulnerable neighbors and creating contingency plans for those who are unprepared. By building relationship-rich buildings and blocks, you're making investments that pay back in ways you'll see and appreciate every day. It used to be this big fear that nobody really talked about or you, you know, slightly get into it, but people were afraid to really enter and it doesn't scare me anymore. I think the danger I was encountering before all, all together now was that I was hoping for safety without doing anything. So now we actually know possibly dangerous things could happen and we are prepared. Just getting myself prepared now in the All Together Now program, um, I'm, I'm much calmer and I don't have the fear anymore. And it made me feel like I was a better mom and it made me feel like a better friend. Maybe I can help someone and I can also, by helping someone, I'm helping myself also and I needed that. The All Together Now program is really great. It provides for the safety of my family and it also helps create a resilient building uh, so you have neighbors who you can count on. So building by building, block by block, neighborhood by neighborhood, borough by borough, we can create a resilient New York City and become a role model for the nation.